Hello, hello, ladies and gentlemen, James Spinning here once again. I'm excited today because I finally get to do a video on something that I made at Christmas. Um, again, apologies that things have taken far too long. Um, life and um, grown up work has gotten away. Um, so this is all about Sonic Kinetic today. So at Christmas, I, I got my hands on their quartet instruments. So the Indy 2 uh, string quartet and the Ostinato quartet instrument sort of a little christmas present for me um and i i made a track i i sort of went down the one track one company route and used a couple more instruments by sonic kinetic so today is all about their quartet plus extra christmassy stuff <laughs> so christmas in june that's what it is so i'm going to feature indy 2 and the ostinato quartet um and show you how much fun you can have as always, I'm not going to do a full in-depth tutorial on these instruments. If you want the full in-depth tutorial, go to the Sonic Kinetic website and look at their fabulous videos already. But what I will do is show you how much I love them and show you how much fun you can have with them and how inspiring they can be. Um, so I think without further ado, let me show you Sonic Kinetic stuff. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is Sonic Kinetic's Indie 2, first up on Contact. Uh, it's for the Contact player. Um, this is the follow-up to their indie instrument, phrase-based instrument, uh, and that was sort of more uh, small groups of brass strings and, and woodwinds um, in small, lovely, they call it exquisite ensembles, um, and it is exquisite, or exquisite, depending on how you say it. Um, uh, and this is very much based on the string quartet, so everything you'll hear is just two violins, viola and cello. So, for those that don't know Sonic Kinetic Libraries, um, I'm a huge fan, and um, as you can see on my contact, I have a lot of their instruments um, over the years. Huge, huge fan. Love them, love them, love them. Um, a lot of their instruments are phrase-based libraries, and they can be incredibly inspiring, and they get me going. Um, so, this is no exception. Sorry, folks. I'm just, I'm just going to turn off the exposure. Um, because British weather cannot decide what it wants to do. So I'll turn off the exposure so um, it may go in and out, but it's not dark and light hell. Anyway, ah, that aside. Um, so, <laughs> where was I? To play a sonic kinetic library, uh, basically you need to hold down a chord, and those are in the blue keys. So I'm going to press this, and if you go to the bottom left corner of this, you can see me changing chords, you see. Um, play any chord, really. Yeah. Uh, they are all just triads, so uh, if you want extensions, I'll show you how that you do that in a minute. And uh, with the indie, um, and I think they did it with noir, was it noir? Yeah. With the indie, it's sort of laid out in blocks, and you've got um, 12 blocks of, of the notes from C3 all the way to B3, okay? So at any one time, you can have 12 phrases loaded up. So these, this is what? F. F, this is an F. These are the ones that just come out of the box. Yeah. Lots of flavours. Um, and I love that. So, let's just explain how you can get it going. Um, uh, it's, it can be a little bit daunting to work out. It can be a little bit... Whoa! but actually I, I've learned to love it. Uh, just press on here and you'll get the menu of all the phrases. And these are the subheadings. Scraps, silky, fluffy, woven, velvet, cotton. I like the word fluffy. If you want to hear these phrases, you just press the speaker icon. Now, what I've always loved about Sonic Kinetic is they, they draw what the phrase sound like. I, I, and I love it. Uh, here we go. Um, love it. So if you if you like that, you just click on it and then you get it. So this is obviously an F. I'm going to change it to E minor. So let's go down so you can actually see me change chords. D minor. Sorry. D minor. C minor. And so on and so forth. You can play more than one at any one time. Play four if you like. You could play, I don't know, try all 12. <laughs> anyway, besides the point. I don't think you'll need more than two. 
or three. Um, but here's where the fun begins. If you want to play more than one, um, mod wheel action. It's always useful. Um, this little icon of the mod wheel basically says uh, whether you want it to be changed by the mod wheel. So this is no change. If I turn it on, it'll quiet loud. So for example, if I wanted, I don't know, Okay, so I want that to be changed by the mod wheel, but I don't want this one. So what you'll hear is when I change the mod wheel, this diddle 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 is going to gradually come in. So the mod wheel's all the way down, all two at the same time. Uh, so you can have lots of expression fun with that. Um, I, I love that feature. Uh, uh, independent tempo mapping, I think it's this called. This is basically, I think they were all recorded around 100 BPM. I think I could be very wrong. Uh, but you can play it at uh, uh, twice the speed. Sorry, mod wheel. Uh, or half speed. Yeah, so again, fun. You can change things. You can change tempos for one phrase and not the other. Harmonic shift. Uh, huge, huge fan of this thing. Um, I'll do that in a minute. But um, more importantly, drag and drop shows you what you're playing. And you can drag it onto your DAW and get another instrument to play it. Um, and if you want the different keys, just press up here. And uh, there you go. You pick a key and you drag it. Pick a key, drag it. Um, that's incredibly useful uh, if you want to do quick arrangements and stuff. Um, but let me get to harmonic shift because this, quite frankly, is my... I love the harmonic shift function. What is it? Well, it's basically when you press these green keys up here, it will shift onto the chord relative to the chord that you're playing in the blue keys. You see what I mean? So if I'm playing F... Uh, this is going to shift in degrees of the scale of F major. Um, not, I'm playing a C here, D here, E, F, G, and so on. It's the degree of the scale. Um, so it's relative. Um, so that's the first thing to just quickly get your head around. So if, I, if I'm in F and I press, uh, as it were, D6, it'll be the second degree of the F major scale, which would be G minor. So here we go. This is F, and I'm going to press the D goes to G minor and this then and so on and so forth. It changes course. Now, why would you want to do this? Well, uh, this is where the fun begins. Exactly the same sort of um, thing as the mod wheel. You can decide to harmonically shift one phrase and not the other. So, I don't know, let's, let's have fun with this. Now, in order to harmonically shift, you have to press this on and off. So in order for something to not harmonically shift, press that off. So I'm going to keep that um, at F or whatever key. And this is the one I'm going to harmonically shift. OK, so if I press this, it's going to change, but it's going to keep the that one staying still. Here we go. Ready? Ooh. Oh, that's quite interesting. Anyway, um, sorry, folks, I had a little malfunction. Um, no idea why. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep this playing the F, and this is going to harmonically shift. Here we go. So I'm going to play them at the same time. So this is both of them playing F. Just watch the green keys. Yeah, so you're you're basically putting the secondary chord over the first one. So um, you know you can put the flat seventh over the the root chord. And it's, it, that's how you get tensions, and it's fabulous. So if you want to see this in action again, go go on to my fantasy video and, and the harmonic shift uh, chapter link above. Um, but harmonic shift, absolutely loved it, love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. Um, uh, there is a random, obviously, if you hover over the Indie Two logo, it randomizes absolutely everything. 
different phrases, press it again. So you can get a quick flavour. Yeah, press again. And so I'm so I'm harmonically shifting, aren't I? Um, if you only want to randomise uh, one, just press this. Uh, love it, love it, love it. Um, and if you find a bank of stuff and you spend hours on phrases and all of that, just save it as a snapshot. Um, just very quickly, you have the mic positions there, all very useful. L let me show you the, the ostinato quickly. So for those that are familiar with the ostinato, this is no change, but it's got a couple of nice little features. As usual, uh, play a chord in the left and it'll tell you what you're doing. Now you can have sevenths in this. Um, and I love that and it gives you a little graphical display and you can solo these so this is just viola and cello I could have just the cello and the first violin sorry let's do that I love that feature now uh, the yellow keys are where, where you find your um, patterns So if you don't want to have have them linked, just press um, C4, C sharp 4, sorry. And then you can uh, change here. Yeah. And so on, so forth, so forth, blah, blah, blah. Let's have F minor 7. Let's just keep that going. Uh, fun little things. It's the speed. You can have twice or blah, blah, blah. that yeah uh, independent tempo mapping as usual um, and then uh, up here you have different voicings these one two three and four and five Yeah, um, uh, if you'll find that if you do attention, they don't do change it on all of them. So four and five, no. But if it's just the triad, they will. So what you'll find is um, between four and five on the triad, probably go to the second. Um, so that's all lovely. Um, A, B, C. Are different patterns. So if I'm going to press A, it's flipping in between uh, inversions, as you can see at the bottom. So B at the minute is doing nothing. Um, now, if you, as you noticed, B did naff all. If you wanted to do it something, press this, go into arpeggiator keys, and if you see, look, that's one. That's so that's. That's A, B, and C. B, let's do something. Uh, inversions, I don't know. There we go, that'll do. And then we press B. Yeah, so you can have lots of fun with that. Um, now, uh, obviously, I, I absolutely love the harmonic shift and it gives you two options. You've got absolute and relative. Now, I'm, again, I'm playing F. Um, so relative will be the degrees of the scale. So if I go, so it even tells you 3 and F up here. 4 and F, 5 and F, 6 and F, 7 and F. Yeah, now rel absolute, and you press a C, it's 5, isn't it? D would be 6. E would be seven, and then if you press the F of the harmonic shift, you're back in one. So again, it's it's what however you like to really um, work it. You can obviously change them on here if you want. <laughs> Go nuts if you want. So you can literally find anything. I think that's that's enough information. You can record MIDI by the way. That's a really nice touch. So like the drag and drop, um, uh, recording MIDI um, and all of that. 
so so useful um, with these instruments. Anyway, I think I should show you exactly what I did on the track. So folks, um, uh, as I usually do on any sort of track, I, I create some sort of rubbishy chord chart and I and no exception here, used easy keys to basically play myself um, a chord pattern. As you can see at the top, let's just solo it. This is uh, the chorus. Holiday cheese, there you go. Um, and then I went straight in uh, with my contact and I opened up my ostinato. And I shifted some of those chords onto my ostinato. Let me just let me just go down here. And this is the chorus again, just from what I played you. So With some key switches and me going a bit funny then I just did I just did the same with indie um, and uh, let's go here I hope you can see that um, and I just found some phrases that I liked and did the same with indie here we go this is the chorus Good. Um, and then, uh, as it was a one track, one company, I decided to get the first indie out just for a little bit of textures. Um, and this is my textures. Same place. Let's do that. So sort of wispy, wispy violin stuff. Do the coda. Do the ending. Bit of brassage. Yeah, with the indie that point. Yeah, so just added something else. Now, if you remember on indie, I had this lovely cello theme. Yeah, and I just wanted some uh, strings the orchestral strings to uh, sort of complement it, I suppose, which were these. Yeah, and then I had some bass staccato, I think, for the cello too. Yeah, and then you guessed it, you probably had already seen it. Um, <laughs> excuse me. Uh, because it was Christmas, way back then, I used the sleigh bells. Here we go. Of course I did. Anyway, happy Christmas, everybody. So, um, that, <laughs> that was in a nutshell my track. These were the bounce downs. So, as you can see, um, uh, the ostinato instruments uh, were in this sort of beigey thing. Um, these are the ostinatos. And I I panned them slightly differently to the quartet. So the quartet is in one and the ostinato is another, just to differentiate them. This is the two of them. So I've got quartet, indie quartet on the left, ostinato on the right. Yeah. And then uh, just to show you the, the, sorry, this is my cello um, separately with the indie quartet. Christmas cheese, I love it, love it. Did this help? I did do a thing with the cellos just to spread it out a bit. Um, I sort of, yeah, I did a duplicate thing and delayed it slightly. It seemed to help. Anyway, um, <clears throat> so that's why the cellos will sound so big. So I think without further ado, this is my Christmas 
Christmas track in June. Um, Happy Christmas, everybody, featuring all of featuring lots of sonic kinetic, but especially indie two string quartet and ostinato quartet. Here we go. Happy Christmas in June. <laughs> forgotten about that weird delay at the end anyway um that was riding a sleigh and some snowy vista so uh that was sonic kinetic um i'm a huge huge fan of sonic kinetic libraries and every instrument that they that they put out i i, I always drool over and, and want um so uh yeah huge fan huge thumbs up uh go out and enjoy them um because they are quite a lot of fun and quite inspiring if you like this please please give it a like and subscribe why not uh, subscribe ring the bell and you'll be notified of any other nonsense that i do in the future apologies yet again that that seemed to be six months too late but there's, <laughs> there's one more video that i've got to do uh, from a christmas present again but that's coming very very soon uh, so stay tuned for that um but in the meantime stay well everybody stay safe and i'll see you very very soon bye